Hello and welcome! So if you are like me, you probably use background music in your video games, and as well you should, it's very helpful. Um, but I've seen a few times people are adding music to their game, or what they're doing. You have this audio stream player, you get your music, I have already got some music in here, and that's very good, you can play it, you can autoplay it, you can do anything you like with that. Um, but the issue is, say that, you know, maybe you have music that starts at the main menu, so maybe this scene one is the main menu, and then when you get into your actual game you want it to keep playing that music, well this audio stream player is going to disappear because you're transferring to a different scene. So I'll show you what to do about that. First of all, let me just differentiate these two scenes real quick and I'll set up some of the project. Okay, so here we have. This is the naive approach, which doesn't really work. I'll set the autoplay anyway. You start the game, the music starts. I don't know what this audio level is like, so I'm gonna make sure that's quite quiet, because I don't want this to be louder than my actual voice. But anyway, when you press play the game, the music disappears. That's no good. Well, anyway, here's the solution. Get rid of that. We're going to do it in a uh, auto load script. So you see in project settings you have the ability to add scripts uh, which are loaded kind of outside of this this scene tree view. So I'm going to create a new script. I'm going to call it music player because I've done this a few times and normally I just name it music player. Um, let's put no comments. Um, so first I'm just going to make sure that's loaded. So we have our auto load. Let's go grab that. Uh, that's the wrong folder. This is the right one. So we have our music player. So this will be loaded automatically. Now in this music player we don't want it to just be a node. And here's kind of the interesting thing. And you can do this with any node type. If you don't want your singleton or your auto load script to be a node, you can have it be an audio stream player, if you like. And that's pretty neat. You can actually also, you can set this to be a canvas layer if you want to spawn stuff on the screen. You can set it to be a sprite if you just want there to always be a sprite there. Uh, this works for pretty much any node, I think, so you can kind of go wild. Uh, and now that we have this audio stream player, well, we have to do a few things. We have to configure it, which is not going to be super difficult. Um, basically, we just have to set the stream. So we have stream is equal to I think I can just do it like this if I load think that'll work it might not I'll, I'll find out in a second I suppose and I want to do autoplay equals true so I think what should happen nothing hold on let me set play Maybe that works. There we go, okay. So, autoplay is fine, but by the time it calls ready, it's already been added to the scene, so it's a bit of a, uh, a thing like that. But anyway, play. This is going on in the background. Play the game. Back to the menu. Play the game. Back to the menu. That's it. That's all you have to do. It's super simple. Um, I saw this on Reddit, so that's why I'm making the video. It just sort of reminded me that, oh, I had to work this out a couple of times. And you can you can make this as complex as you like. I think in one of my games I had um, a few different songs I wanted to play, so I had in here sort of a, an, a, like a play song function. And it would just set the new song name, um, there would be kind of a fading effect, which you can achieve by just creating a second audio stream player. Very versatile. Maybe I'll even show how to do that at some point. I would have to look into it because it's been a while. Um, but that's the basic idea. That's all that is. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope that was informative to somebody looking out, uh, looking up how to do this on, on Google sometimes. So uh, thanks for watching and, and stay tuned for more content like this. Goodbye. Okay, so 
it's a few minutes late when I realized I can't just leave you guys with that. I mean, that's good, but I just alluded to a super cool feature, which is the crossfading part. So I, I guess I'm going to try and re-implement that. I've looked over my old code. Uh, I'm going to go set up the scene. i got to go grab a second song, and then I'll get into it. Okay, so I have got this new button I added here, which is change the song. And what's that? what that's going to do is it's going to do this. It's going to tell the music player, hey, change it to the Warp Tech Shinji remix, because that was from the game, which I originally implemented this. Um, so to make things simple for me, I'm just going to write this little play song bit right here. It's just going to be, it's going to take in a song name. It's going to look for it in here, and it's just going to change to that song. And okay, you can see, that looks pretty simple. I mean, that's pretty much all you have to do, I guess. Um, here's the thing, though, because I don't want to just stop the previous song and start playing the next one, which is what this is going to do. I want to crossfade them, so I need the song that's currently playing to fade out, and I need the song that's going to be playing to fade in. Uh, and Basically, how I did it before is that I had two separate audio stream players. So I have the main one, and I have the other one which I called the dummy player. Or I could call it the fading, fade, I don't know, dummy player is fine. Um, in play song, you change the stream on the dummy player, so it starts playing the other song basically simultaneously, but you put the volume down really low so you don't hear it, and then because you know that another song has been selected, it just slowly fades in that song, and it slowly fades out the other song, and when the dummy player gets to, you know, an acceptable volume of zero decibels, um, it switches them over, so it just... dummy player disappears, it goes on to the normal one, as if nothing happened. Um, so I'll program this, and I'll show a little bit about how that works. First of all, I'm going to create that dummy player. Okay, so we have that, and just to make it a little bit easier... Actually, I could probably do it up here, couldn't I? Because I could use the onReady keyword, which will do that. So I think I can just do that, I think. Just to double check, let me uh, see if that worked. Hold on. There was the volume right down. Yeah, so this works. So we can see our dummy player is at the audio stream player. Okay. So that works excellently. So I don't want to set the stream first of all, I want to set dummy player stream. And I want to do this. So I think what's going to happen now is that um, it's going to start off playing button. Um, and then when I press the change the song button, it's going to run this. It's going to just start playing the other one at the same time. Hold on, is this the wrong scene? This is the right one. Now I can't hear because I don't have my headphones on, so let me hold this up to my ear. That's interesting, it seems like it isn't. Okay. Well, that's peculiar. Why not, I wonder? Um, okay, no reason, it just decided not to. Actually, no, you know what? It's because I'm a fool, I'm not actually adding it to the scene, so... I'm just gonna do it real simple, I'm just gonna say add child dummy player. So now the dummy player is a child of my audio stream player. And now, I think... Yeah, you can hear two songs playing at once. It's dreadful, if I'm honest. But, so that's not definitely not what we want. Um, it's what we want for now, but as I said, I want this dummy player to start off very, very quiet, because this is the one that's fading in. So should be easy enough. I know that the audio stream player has a volume decibels thing, so I'm going to say that's minus 60. Okay, so that's super quiet. I think default is zero, I think it should be. So minus 60 is pretty much inaudible. Um, now what I want to do, I need some way to consistently be increasing this volume. So that's going to happen in process, of course. And I'm going to have this fading keyword up here, so set it to false at the at first because nothing's happening. And I'm just going to say if fading, because I know exactly how this is going to fade, I just need to do that. And let's say I want it to happen 
you know, this will be one per second, one decibel per second. I need that to happen in a timely fashion, so I'm going to say that's going to fade in over the course of a second. Okay, and I can alter that if I want to. If I put 30, it would be 30 decibels a second, and it would take two seconds. So you, you see how it works. Um, with this thing increasing in volume, I basically want to say once it gets to zero decibels, um, just make this thing stop, stop fading, and change the actual audio stream player, this one, over to this song at this point. So I can do that quite easily. Okay, so there we go, I'm just resetting the volume right down. Um, I'm also just going to tell it to stop entirely. But before I do that, I need some information from this, because I'm not just going to stop it, I need, um, I need to play. Well, I need to set the stream, actually. So I think, I think I can do that by just saying stream is the dummy player dot stream, and I'm going to play it from I can remember what this is. Uh, get, oh shoot, hold on. What? Which? What was it? Playback position. That sounds right. So I think if I play it from the dummy player's playback position, it should pick up pretty much seamlessly. I think that should work. Um, so I'm just going to make sure we know that it is fading in here, and then at this point I'm just going to say, well, it's not fading anymore at all. And just for good measure, if it is fading, I know I want my own volume to decrease at pretty much the same pace. So this might work. I'm going to find out where, if I've messed anything up, if I've lost anything. So let me just listen carefully. Now that's interesting because it starts. Okay, no, you know what it is? I have missed something terribly obvious, which is that I reset the volume of the dummy player, but my actual volume is tiny. So let's try that. How does this work? It does. It does work indeed. It does work indeed. So let me, just to double check, what if I make this take four seconds? So this is going to take quite a while. I really want to emphasize the crossfading part. So here is button. Well, you can't really hear it that well, but there is a crossfade. There is a crossfade, and I haven't got my headphones on, so maybe it picks up better if you're actually listening to the audio. Um, but there you have it. That is how you create a nice cross-fading um, music player system. Um, they should work fine. You can have this. I will. Uh, I can post this code in a comment if you're if you're interested in having it. You would rather not copy it from the screen, but it's very simple. And um, and that's that. I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, if you want more content like this, uh, subscribe, like my channel. Tell me how good my code is. Tell me how impressed you are that I managed to do this. And thanks for watching. Goodbye.